this one i just want to request you all to kindly like and subscribe our channel so that you know hit the bell icon and so that you can get all the updates about all our lectures that we're giving all right so the this topic now we're going to start off with this topic which is practice influencing ethical and ethical business practices now this is also the uh, you know subtopic already that we have covered in our previous lectures but just to give you an overview in this overview slides it's very important for us to understand the entire uh, you know concept and how business ethics are related with with unethical and ethical practices and what are some of the factors that are going to cause these ethical and unethical business practices so this is extremely important so in order to understand this i'm just going to start off so factors influencing ethical business practices very important and you know before we start with these factors i just want to tell you that there are always factors involved for everything everything happens for a reason right so whenever we establish in an organization that this act is ethical or this act is unethical there is some root cause that is causing it to be ethical or unethical and we have to you know make sure that what the influence is we have to do that basically so factors influencing ethical and ethical business practices are as such that personal for factors influencing ethical business practices personal code of ethics legislation leadership government rules and regulations ethical code of the company social pressures ethical climate of the industry so these are some of the aspects of the lectures that are extremely important there needs to be personal code of ethics okay need to be there you can never just live without a code of ethics it's not just about business and keep on reiterating on this concept that it's not about just business ethics it's about your individual ethics as well what you consider right and wrong what factors influence your behaviors how do you reside to the moral principles everything is covered in this right so personal code of ethics are very important in order to ensure that the business practices are also ethical if the leaders are not going to be ethical it's itself like in under in their heart individually if they won't have that ethical boundaries with themselves so it means that you know it's even in the business they won't be ethical so this is one very important concept second is legislation so when it's been determined by the government entities that you know you this is legal or this is illegal you need to make sure that you follow the legislation you need to make sure that the legislation makes you makes your business ethical leadership i very well told you now all of this the, uh, all of these points they are connected leadership needs to make sure that they have personal code of ethics which and they are following the legislation which is making them follow and developing ethical business practices so they are a very important concept it needs to be made sure that you know that the ethical business practices are there then we have government rules and regulations again a very simple yet a very interesting topic so government rules and regulations is quite a lot similar to legislation you need to make sure that the rules and regulations that are set by the government you are following those you need to make sure that they are not they're taken care of and they have to be implemented right so this is one important thing then there is ethical code of the company every company should have some written ethical uh, conducts whenever you join a company i'm sure many of you know that you know you at times you get the what do we call it the employee handbook employee handbook tells you about the ethical codes of the company this is what you can do this is what you cannot do so do's and don'ts are clearly defined in that similarly for every stakeholder in the contract the do's and don'ts are defined so that the ethical codes of the company are defined even on the websites as well of the business their corporations their attacks actually a lot of times the ethical codes of conducts are mentioned that what are our values right so if you can say honesty integrity quality quality all of these are part of ethics then we have social pressures social pressures are uh, you know obviously the societal pressures that we have we need to make sure that we are ethical we are not doing pollution or anything like that all right and uh, because we know that we have a social pressure that people won't like it people are going to complain about it then we have ethical climate of the industry ethical climate of the industry is again that you are a type of a business but there are many of your competitors who are in one industry right so all of you how is the ethical climate is it is it like ethical or people are supporting each other each other's companies or they are you know competitors of each other i know but still are they like very harsh towards each other so these things also determine if a company is ethical or unethical then we have factors influencing unethical business practices 
so there are no codes of ethics uh, you know if there are no codes of ethics basically the you know the opposite of all these points would make you unethical in your business practices but i'm going to touch these in detail so no code of ethics if there are no code of ethics again the business is going to be unethical fear of reprisal now this is something that we discussed in the last lecture as well we very well discussed that there is always a fear of reprisal now when we are talking about fear of reprisal we should also understand that reprisal means you know a uh, retaliation basically counter attack so they know that you know a forcible seizure of anything or you know if you are going to do something bad for the organization there will be a retaliatory act so you would have to be accountable you have to be sure that you know that you are going to be accountable and you will have to be you will be punished for whatever you do right so impact of peer influence again if peers are unethical maybe you're going to start following them all right and you're going to just be you can say you know just start following them and being the bad person as well then fear of reprisal again retaliation if you're being uh, retaliated to the uh, code of ethics then you can be unethical as well all right so you should know that you will be accountable setting down a slippery uh, going down a slippery slope which means that you are going on a risky area you know that you are doing something which is risky you should just do a business on a very you know obviously risks are taken in a business but this is not that kind of risk if you are you know betraying your competitor betraying your owners and you know that you know maybe uh, they they'll get to know about it but you are just not taking care of it that's a slippery road because you're not you you know that okay nothing is going bad right now but it can be in future so going down a slippery road is a slope can also be an Business practice. Setting a bad example. Once you're going to do something today, you will make sure that the others are also doing that. So this is something which is very, very, you know, um, disturbing that you are setting a bad example for the ones that are working under you. This goes for the leadership. How can leaders do that? How can leaders betray the owners because they know they should know that the people who are below them are also going to follow that, and then the owners also think like that, right? So all these all these points are the ones that are influencing. Business practices. All right, a very important two slides that I want to touch with you, and I want to make sure that you understand this. So we're short of time. I'll just try to you know cover these in detail. Stages in development of ethical standards in the business. Simple obedience, conduct to avoid punishment. I told you that when you are uh, developing ethical standards in a business, there are different stages for it. We have discussed these stages in detail in the previous lecture as well. We are going to do do these in detail this time as well, so that you know we are understanding that how it's working. Simple obedience, conduct to avoid punishment. A person's behavior is driven by simplistic concerns such as fear of punishment or a quick appraisal of the immediate benefits to be obtained. So simplistic concerns are that there is a fear of punishment there, and everyone knows that there is a quick appraisal of the immediate benefits to be obtained. So you need to make sure that you are ethical, and you should know that you will be accountable to whatever you do. So there should be a simple obedience at least. Then we have conformity to group behavior and actions to gain personal rewards. So personal behavior is constrained by the interpretation of social norms and their desire to be perceived as a good person. So I told you that everyone has their different perceptions. If you remember in the last lecture, I told you. So everyone, when they have a different perceptions, they think that you know, uh, social norms and their desires, their right, and they take a different definition for it. They perceive it in a different way, right? So their behaviors they change, and that's the thing that uh, needs to be acknowledged. That you should know that you are taking those perceptions in mind that are ethical. That is very important, right? So this is something which is extremely important that the ethical standards needs to be maintained in all the interpretations of the social norms and their desires right so you you can't say that everyone is going to consider everything as similar or everything is going to you know understand one thing in a, in one way no you can have difference of opinions you can do and perceive things differently but the the follow rules approach is there that needs to be followed even with different perceptions there are there are same you can say moral principles which define right and wrong so everyone who has different opinions or different perceptions still they they are abide by the same moral principles and values so whatever decisions they take may be not similar but they should abide by the uh, rules and regulations that is called the follow the rules approach all right moving 
on the next point we have is good boy good girl orientation conduct avoid dislike and rejection a more complex behavior that tends to concern the relationship of the individual to society as a whole rather than local or institutional values a person's actions reflect universal principles and consideration of and respect for different perspectives so there is no good boy or good girl orientation right so again this point is related with this one i told you that we are not defining anything like good girl or good boy everyone is going to have different perspectives in a society right so a more complex behavior that tends to be concerned with the relationship of the individual to society as a whole so even if you have complex behaviors if you uh, you know you are not having those local or institutional values still a person's action reflect universal principles of consideration of and what are those universal principles of consideration they are basically the moral values that stays the same right and wrong stays the same if you even if you go to different religions even if you go in different perceptions pers- perspectives right even the atheist right i'm just giving an example um or any religion they all agree to one common thing they agree to this that okay you should not kill someone or you should not you know um cheat or do fraud with someone or be dishonest so all of these are moral principles that have been established so even if someone just you know take care of it in a different way the other take care of it in, in some other way we are still not calling them you know giving them the okay you are a good boy but you are a bad boy no if they are following the moral principles they both are good boys so there is no such thing as good girl and good boy even with different perspectives just make sure that you are uh, reflecting the universal principles and consideration of and respect for different perspectives moving on we have this very important slide i really want you to understand it fully if you have any questions just write down in the comment section and i'll be answering those all right let's start with this one so stages in development of ethical standards and legal trust so there are different stages we have already uh, you know discussed some of them previously so it was simple obedience it was conformity to group behavior it was good boy or good girl orientation moving and moving on we have social contract driven abiding by rules to maintain a common ground largely based on legistic sorry legalistic or contractual orientation interactions are viewed as transactional in nature and based on rules right so basically we already discussed this in detail that uh, you know legally or contractually you are bound to follow those ethics so you have stepped you have set those boundaries you have set those rules you have set those contracts and that is why one needs to make sure that they are not unethical right and then i also discussed with you transactional behaviors uh, you know the other day transactional leadership so it's a transaction management is a part of one style of leadership that focuses on supervision uh, organization and performance and you know it, it is it basically they are considered as transactions the interactions are considered as transaction in nature and they're based on the rules and regulations then we have conscience orientation universal laws of conduct predicted the bounds of sense of justice and not rules alone Consider the golden rule stage. This is a golden rule stage predicted on one's ability to emphasize its issues from another's perspective, anchored by a sense of justice. Reign of values-driven leadership. Values-driven leadership again, principle, social contract, law and order, moral, good boy attitude, self-interest, avoiding punishment. So these are basically some of the stages. So reign of values-driven leadership. And one thing very interesting is. That good boy attitude means that everyone who's under the moral principle is a good boy person. So I think all of these were in detail discussed in the last section. I've just given an overview. Maintaining the social order in this stage, laws and social order reign supreme. Rules and regulations are to be followed and obeyed. We need to make sure that we are following and obeying the rules and regulations. It shows the moral development of a person as part of her whole society. Each person becomes more aware of the impact of everyone's actions on others and focuses on their own. Or on their own role, so everyone's actions are taken into account, and focus, uh, you know, is on the own role. That what your role would be, how ethical you would be in yourself with true values, so that you can be ethical for the organization as a whole. This was it. Thank you very much for listening. Um, we're saying bye to you from Sparkles College. I hope that this course was informative for you. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.